Hi everybody, it's Jay Nan, the San Antonio Metal Music Examiner here at Fall Ball 210 Capones for an absolutely incredible two-day festival here and I had the pleasure of being here with the ladies of the Butcher Babies, Heidi Shepard, Carla Harvey. Thank you. Welcome back to San Antonio. How are you? How dare you call us ladies? Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You want to talk about 40 minutes of hell and sheer madness on stage. <laughs> they just got off stage a little while ago in the blistering sun. And what that could be an insult, depending on what you take. 40 minutes of hell. Oh. No, it was oh, fantastic. God. Incredible, oh, God. incredible raging performance, <laughs> and it was fantastic. But let me hear from you. How did it feel up there? It was fine. You know, I've, I've had a cold all week, so it was a little hard for me. But who cares? You know, we're out there. We have a good time no matter what. And, uh, you know, whatever. One thing that we love to do is make our state show a party. So regardless of the heat or anything, this is our party, and we're gonna have it. So um, you know, we got up there, just had a really good time, played some fun metal. The crowd was fun. It was a good, it was a fun night. Yeah. Now, of course, Butcher Babies released Goliath, their first full-length album last year, and just three weeks ago, the EP of cover songs uncovered. And yeah. before I get into a couple of the songs that are on that, I would love to ask you about a cover song that did not make that, that you performed here two years ago, here in the land of Texas, on your very first San Antonio performance, and of course that was FUCKING HOSTILE! by Pantera. Um, and you got, I remember I was at that show, you got an incredible response from Now, a lot of bands, regardless, would be, I don't know if scared is the right word, but would, no, be, very, right would be very hesitant to perform that, especially in Especially Texas. the guitar players. Nobody <laughs> wants, the guitar players hey. never want Right. And that's my I point. I mean, that. Right. How did that come about? Whose idea was it? Was it a collective effort? Me and Heidi have always loved that song. We're fucking hostile. Yeah. We yeah. wanted to play it before um, in a cover band that we were in, and the musicians couldn't handle the song. They couldn't play it fast enough. So we got um, this band together. That was one of our goals, is to be able to play fucking hostile. We're like, all right, can you play fucking hostile? We're like, yeah. We're like, cool, you're in the band. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, it is a great workout. In some of our earliest rehearsals, we would jog in place while singing and uh, just to get warmed up and uh, the song is so much fun and especially when we started this band you know we were pretty um, volatile and angry you yeah. know women and um, it just fit perfectly yeah. and uh, we still love that song but you know we wanted to, for the album we wanted to choose covers that people wouldn't expect from us and that would have been expected. People would, yeah of course especially since we used to perform that and I think everyone loves that song how can we not? Um, I, pe I think people were expecting that to be on a covers EP or something we would have put out. But one rule we have with this EP is no metal. No metal and nothing anyone would, would expect. No Guns N' Roses, no, you know, nothing anyone would expect. And um, so we pulled songs from our childhood that kind of inspired us as kids into, you know, our adolescence and or adulthood, everything, and um, that's how we came up with the five songs that made on the TV. Right, and of course, and I will get into that in a second, but along those lines of Pantera, uh, one thing that I'm going to be doing here in the next few weeks of all the interviews that I'm doing, and you are the first that I will be asking this question to, but in, a, in about another month of five weeks, we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of Dimebag's passing. Um, did you ever have the chance to meet him, or even if you didn't, um, just talk about the general influence that Pantera and he, his music created for you. I did meet Time Time Back years ago. I was a kid. Um, Pantera was one of my first concerts, and so I got to meet them. And I got to go backstage, and it was funny. They were party bands. They liked to have yes. fun. <laughs> that's, that's and what they were doing is they were, they, were, they, were, um, they had hot dogs, and they were throwing them at all the people backstage. You know, when I was a little kid, and I was like, take me out here. <laughs> But I met Diane Pat and she was here. It was an amazing experience. The little fumble came over and patted me on the head and wanted to know if I wanted an autograph, little girl. I was like, no way, I want to make out with you, Phil. You know, but I was a kid, so that was the appropriate way to treat a child. You know what I mean? But we got to tour with Phil recently, too, and that was an amazing experience. But Pantera, for me, was my life when I was a kid. I would sit in my room, read comics, and listen to Pantera. I love that band. Um, I think, you know, I, I loved old school thrash metal, I loved Slayer, I loved old school Metallica, but when I heard Pantera the first time, it changed everything for me, and, and I knew that 
yes, I want to play metal music. I love Phil's voice. I want to be just like Phil. Hugely inspired by them. So, um, As you can tell by her vocals. Yeah. It, that's like, you know, Phil's one of our biggest you know, vocal influences, but Pantera in general is a huge band influence. Their party atmosphere, their music is serious, like ours, but on stage, it's a big party, and we really take that. They were also able to touch so many people as, as a metal band. Um, and it's, it's pretty crazy. You would go to their shows, and there would be such a wide variety of people there. And uh, they managed to make it onto the radio playing heavy, heavy music. And that's not an easy feat. You know, it's something, really not. Right. Something I really believe with Pantera is that they didn't just create music, they created a lifestyle. And that's an amazing thing to do as a musician, to create a lifestyle with your music. I mean, they're legends. You can't, you, you can't be a metal band and not love Pantera. I don't know. I, if, if you're a metal band and you don't like Pantera, you have no business being in this business. But that's, that's really what it is. I, growing up, um, I, was, I grew up in a Mormon household and I was not allowed to listen to that kind of music. So as I got older and I, and I, and I uh, grew into you know, loving Pantera on the side, as it, I had to kind of hide it. And, my, and it was a huge influence for me as well. I never met Dimebag, but, um, but you know, he definitely, as I said, he created a lifestyle, but he also created a way guitar. There's so many guitar players nowadays who try to emulate that, and he can never be re reproduced. That will never happen. Um, but you know, he did something for music that if he hadn't done, it would be a very different music scene nowadays. Um, you know, Pantera in general, so we've had the, the blessing and ability to, you know, tour with Phil for Down, and that was... Probably, I would say the most inspirational band that I've ever we've ever toured with, um, because the guys in the band are really awesome. But also Phil was incredible. He was such a nice person to us. He he took us under his wing, and he he even told us I, I bestow the gift of <laughs> success to you. He was a wise man. And then he turned around as he walked away and said, "It's a curse. It's a curse." <laughs> and but but really. Took us under his wing on that tour, and it, it, it made me kind of it restored my my uh, I, I guess more faith in metal at the same time because he really, as a legend, he could be a, a really great person. His name is Aqua, but you know he could be a really great person at the same time. I was afraid to meet him. I was so afraid. And same with Vinnie Paul. I was afraid, but they have both been so incredibly nice to me and us. As a band, we've been very supportive of us, and you know, after we we took their their big song, "Fucking Hostile," and probably as some people say, <laughs> you know, we ripped it off a little bit. But um, they've been very supportive of us and nice people. And I think above and beyond being legends as music and as musicians, you know, they they're very cool as well. And of course, on the EP, you have a suicidal tendency cover. Of course, you did S.O.D., Pussy Whip, you got some ZZ Top, and of course, the Osmonds, which on the surface is completely unexpected, and I even <laughs> saw that Donnie came out with a, a little quote saying that you basically yeah. reinvented one of the Osmond songs. <laughs> That's um, so cool. So, I, I yeah. mean, have you heard from him personally, and what influenced that song? Um, no, we have not heard from him personally. He, he uh, gave that quote to our management. I have met Donnie um, and their whole family bunch of times. I'm from Provo, Utah. So uh, growing up, they were hometown heroes. We had you know, everything in Utah. It was an Osmond base. And um, as a kid, my mom was obviously a huge Osmond fan. She converted to be a Mormon because of the Osmonds. And um, and so growing up, I you know she had all their records. And as a kid, I would play these records just in hopes of finding something cool. And about halfway through one of the albums, I heard that opening riff of Crazy Horses. And it is metal. It is me that was the heaviest thing I was, at, at six or seven years old. You know, that was the heaviest thing I had ever heard in, in that day. And I, I stuck with it. And it stuck with me for you know, my entire life. And that's how that song came to be on our YouTube. 
Carla, you are an author as well. Um, your book is semi-autobiographical. Yeah. Um, Sem semi-autobiographical just means I didn't want my mom to know that it is completely truthful. Yeah. And it gets to protect people that you love, in a way. Okay. I didn't want my mom to think badly of some of the things I've done in my life, so I call it semi-autobiographical. And people who haven't had a chance to read it yet may or may not know this, but you are a licensed mortician. Yep. And that fascinates me when I found out that about you. Um, and you hope to open your own funeral home You know, home someday, I, I've right? said that in past interviews, but um, I think now I'd rather just work with grieving people. I'd rather just be a grief counselor. Okay. Running a funeral home is a very hard thing. And, um, you know, I've been on the road so much, and I really enjoy what I do. <laughs> and I, I think connecting with people one-on-one, -on -one, like we do every night with people, is what I want to do. That's what I crave doing. And I think that, for me, um, doing this a form of grief counseling would be a big job. And I have a question from one of my social media readers. Uh, Yvette from Temple, Texas wants to know, Heidi, she said she read somewhere that your mom is a cousin or a distant cousin of Alice Cooper's. That's my mother. That's mother. Oh, your mother. Okay, she said yeah. you. So that's the question would be for you. Um, my mom is, um, her father is, I believe, uh, brothers with Alice Cooper's. I, think, I can't remember exactly how it works out, but Alice Cooper is my mom's cousin. So, um, Italian kids from Detroit. <laughs> Has she seen you perform before? She also wanted to know if that somehow. No, I've actually you interviewed um, Alice Cooper when I was a reporter for Revolver. Okay. But I was too shy to, to tell him. I'm not gonna, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, eventually, it'll so happen. eventually, yeah. eventually, yeah. I'll, I'll tell him. My mom, I took my mom to see him in, in Las Vegas as well, and I would love for her to see him again too. That's and everything. How That's about an true. <laughs> how, how about an update on the new, the new record? Or we step into the studio as soon as we get home. We've been writing all on the road. We've spent all the summer writing. Um, the album's almost finished, writing-wise. When we get home, we go into the studio, and we record it all, and it'll be out somewhere in 2015. Awesome. We, have, we already have a release date, so we better make it, right? <laughs> awesome. Can't wait for that. You know, Butcher Babies are tearing through Texas right now. And who knows, maybe if you haven't already, maybe you'll hear from Scott and Charlie of SOD over Pussy Whip next week at the oh, Knotfest. Since, be awesome. since Anthrax and Butcher Babies will be at Knotfest. We've played with Anthrax several I mean, times, yeah. Anthrax, we actually were in Cardiff, Wales, and we were direct support for Anthrax. And um, we, all of a sudden, our uh, our drum kit fell through. We had a rental, and it fell through. And they were so nice to to offer up their drum kit for that show. And they're you know, really headliners great. Headliners never do that. No, they don't want to touch their stuff. So that was really cool. They were, yeah, they're really they're really cool guys. So I would love for them to hear our s and cover. Well, like I said, <laughs> maybe it'll happen next week maybe in Knotfest. Maybe in Knotfest, and, yeah. and a great trivia question. You know, out of the 54 bands that are there, what's the one band at Knotfest playing twice besides Slipknot? Right Butcher here. Baby. Butcher yeah. Isn't that crazy? Six days from now, they'll be at the VIP party on Friday <laughs> night. A week from tonight, they'll be playing their set. And guess what? I'll be there with you. Oh, okay. yeah! Can't wait so to cover fun. your sets. Well, so, you. ladies, thank you so very much. Go check out the Butcher Babies on tour. When they come to your town, they're tearing up through Texas right now. And go get Uncovered and Goliath. So, for Carla and Heidi, we're going to let them go right now. j Non to San Antonio. Metal Music Examiner reminding you, don't hang them out to dry. <laughs> Hold them up high.